label the um, the cells, like what's inside the solution and what's in the, on the rod and what's... Sure, let's give that a shot. Uh, I'll have to take another look at the rod. Well, we know this is the reaction that's taking place over here. And from the reaction, we can see that this is going to be dissolved in the solution. That's what AQ means. It means dissolved in the solution. So we have the I3 ions dissolved in the solution. And we know this must also be dissolved in the solution because it was written with an AQ. Oh, so both are in the solution? In this case, both of these ions are in the solution. So what's going to happen here is one of these I3 negatives will drift towards the wire and it will pick up an electron that's coming through the wire and then it will drift away from the wire but when it drifts away it will be I minus instead of I3 minus. So I minus eventually would be the solution. That's right. Okay. Um, so eventually you're going to use up all the I3 minuses and then the battery goes dead. As you know from experience batteries don't last forever and this is the basic reason they're running on chemical reactions and eventually, um, you run out of the starting material. In fact, um, the battery becomes not very useful even before you've completely run out of the I3 minus. But this is the basic reason why the battery runs dead, because the chemical reaction starts to near completion. Well, we can do the same thing over here. Here we have the chromium 2 plus. And the chromium 3 plus in the solution. So here the chromium 2 plus drifts near the wire, dumps an electron into it, and then drifts away as chromium 3 plus. So um, these here are what we would call the electrodes, right? And what are these made out of? Well, in this problem, we don't know. They didn't tell us what these are made out of. These are made out of some electrical conductor that they haven't specified for the problem. There's no rule that says that this has to be made out of chromium. In fact, in this case, we want to make it out of some element that's not going to be reactive because we don't want it to inter interfere with the reaction that we have taking place. This should be made out of some unreactive uh, metal that will simply give us a place for the chromium to dump electrons in and for the iodide to pick up electrons. Okay. Does that answer your questions? Yes. Okay. Notice the key here is to go step by step. Who's the anode and who's the cathode? Where's the oxidation and where's the reduction? Who wants to get oxidized and who wants to get reduced? Which way are the electrons going? Which way are the charges going? So we know cathode is always the site of reduction. Anode is always the site of oxidation. Um, reduction always means gaining electrons. Oxidation always means losing electrons. We learned two animal mnemonics for that. Electrons always move towards the cathode, because this is where we're gaining um, electrons. A positive reduction potential tells you who wants to be reduced. And cations always move towards the cathode, and anions always move towards the anode. That's also something that's easy to remember from their names. Um, um, do you ever have to figure out which of these is positive and which is negative? Which what? Is what which saying? electrode is positive and which is negative? Yes. So they didn't ask you that on this problem, but that might be something you would be asked in another problem. So how can we tell which of these is positive and which is negative? Positive. That's one, the one thing that's not always true. Oh, yeah. Sometimes the cathode is positive and sometimes it's not. So we have to work that out. So I'll show you how to do that. Which way are the electrons going in this wire? They're going towards the cathode. Now, in this cell, do the electrons want to move towards the cathode? Or are they being forced? They want to. They want to. So what would make them want to move over here, if this is positive or negative? Positive. That's right. And what would make them want to leave the anode? Negative. So your guess was right. In this particular case, the electrons are moving from here towards here because they want to go here. However, that's because this is a galvanic cell that wants to run. The other type of cell is electrolytic. I don't know if you guys covered that this term? A little bit. All right, that's maybe not important. But an electrolytic cell is one that you're forcing to run with an outside power source. That's why I was asking you whether this was an outside power source or not. So we've been assuming this is not an outside power source, but just an appliance that's being run. But if we put in an outside power source, um, so let's think, suppose for a second this was electrolytic, and that we're actually putting in an outside power source. So this would be an outside battery that we might put in. Well, the electrons would still be moving towards the cathode. Electrons always move towards the cathode, because that's always the site of reduction. But now the electrons don't want to move towards the cathode. Well, why do they not want to move there? Because it's negative. And because this is positive, 
Why are they moving here if this is negative? Because the battery is forcing them to. That's why we need the battery. They wouldn't do this naturally, but the battery is providing outside energy that forces them here. So we saw a lot of things here that are always true. And then that people get confused because there's one thing that depends on the cell. The thing that depends on the cell is which electrode is positive and which one is negative. And the way to, ask, to figure that out is first ask yourself, which way are the electrons going? And then ask yourself, do they want to go there or are they being forced? Uh, well, in the example that we did originally, they wanted to go there. And therefore, they must have been moving towards the positive. So that's where they would normally want to go. These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box thank you